I suppose it's time I talked about tactics because remember that time Lilith tried to put super blimps in the game and call them super weapons? Well, tactics are effectively super weapons done right. And for those of you that follow my channel, I covered super weapons tremendously. It was a flop. I was totally against it. It was kind of laughable in a way, but I gave my suggestion to Lilith on how I thought super weapons should be implemented in the game. And my suggestion at the time was I was a strong believer that they should be a alliance skill that you donate contribution coins to basically like the base shield or slow burn skill and it should have a cooldown. And that's how I suggested super weapons be implemented. Lo and behold, I never saw it coming that Lilith would actually do something similar, but they did it in the form of commander tactics. So we are in version 10.0 of the game. We also have Conquest New York. We'll see how that goes. It's going to be an interesting map. It is a perfectly, well, they claim that it's a perfectly symmetrical map. That'll be yet to be seen. There are generals, which are another form of Conquest specific game mechanics. I'm okay with that. That should make the game a little bit more interesting. I view these similar to super weapons and or tactics so that's all right and we're going to skip past this because we are here to actually talk about super weapons aka commander tactics okay so they did a cool thing they salvaged some of the stuff from the super weapons patches it looks like I don't know if the building model is the same, but they introduced a new building called the Commander Tactic Building or Military Academy. Pretty cool. Those of you that did not get to try tactics, we got to try them in our last Moscow Gold 2. And I have to say, guys, they were actually pretty good. They were not overpowered. They were not overused. They had decent cooldowns. And we had access to all of them to try. And then they did a survey after Conquest and collected our feedback. They were a little bit hard to use. I will say that. It's a little clunky just by the nature of how the game is. But we'll talk about that too. So for those of you that haven't tried them yet, yes, you get up to five tactic slots. And you also get tactic skill sets. You can have multiple of those. So you can set up sets and switch between, say, like an offensive setup, a defensive setup, and some other setup, and so on and so forth. You also have tactical focus. So when you use a skill, you must recharge your tactical focus before you can use it again. So that basically prevents the spam, which I think that was an awesome way to go about it. And on top of that, each tactical skill had a cooldown. So let's kind of skip through that and let's actually take a look. So what's interesting about this is with the introduction of Military Academy, we're just going to go straight into tactics manual. So at the time, tactics, I don't believe when we got to try them, had rarities, but of course, knowing the rarities were going to happen because everything they do has to have a pay to win mechanic to it. They got to make money and they got to keep the game interesting. They got to keep people spending. So of course, there are rare, epic, normal, and legendary tactical skills. So most of these we got to try. So like, for example, there were some pretty strong ones uh, like field fortifications, um, grants a shield for two minutes. That's actually a little bit different than it was in the, the tactical skill beta. Let's say there was not a shield coefficient of 4,200. There's a shield skill for a coefficient of 10,000. And I think that's a legendary skill. So of course, the legendary ones are going to be the most powerful tactical skills. For example, here's one, increase the damage of your own selected troop for 18% for five minutes. And of course, there's a whole hodgepodge of powerful skills. Now, the cool thing that I really like that they did with this is you actually have to unlock them. So it means there's not going to be just this plethora of every player in the game having access to all possible tactical skills in existence. So that means they're not going to be overused. There's going to be variety and they're not going to be spammed. So I'm pretty happy about that, the way they introduced this. And honestly, the cooldowns on these are pretty reasonable. So we have like a rare with a shield coefficient cooldown 200 and a tactical focus cost 100. So I think Lilith did a phenomenal job. I feel like 
This is basically super weapons at the individual player level. And two hours, honestly, is really good because you shouldn't be able to use it every 10 minutes. You shouldn't be able to use it even every half an hour. I feel like having tactical skills where you actually kind of have to think about what you're going to use and how you're going to use them to be a little bit more strategic. I feel like two hours is pretty good. And then on some of them, they have four hour cooldowns. I think there's a, I think four is the longest duration of the cooldown that I have seen on these tactical skills so far. So I am pretty happy with that. And the strongest ones, of course, all have a four hour cooldown. I think that's awesome. So even whales who are going to acquire the legendary tactical skills almost right away are not just going to be able to spam the living daylights out of these. Now, what is going to happen as more players collect them, you might have an alliance holistically for players coordinate together to use a lot of tactical skills in a very short period of time to accomplish a goal. That's okay. That's what they're there for. So, of course, we've got firepower or offensive. We've got defensive. We've got buffs, debuffs. That's interesting. I don't remember there being debuffs. Um, slowing enemy troops down and smoke screen. Uh, preventing enemy troop for attacking while resetting in slow time. That's interesting. This arms an enemy ground force troop within two grids of your own, preventing the enemy troop from attacking for 4.2 seconds. Uh, use that on a whale artillery trying to hit your base. Okay. Specials. I don't think there were specials. Flag will increase the firepower of all allied ground force troops within three grid by 15% for two minutes. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Tactical simulation. So there's also. Oh, wow. I did not. So this did not exist when we tested these. So there are a diamond rating on these. There's one 15% and then max 30%. So apparently you're going to be able to upgrade your tactical skills and make them even stronger. So I'm going to redact my statement that they're not overpowered. And let's look at a couple of these, like attack. And here's one that does a coefficient. What's it look like at max? Coefficient 7,200. So it's 4,400 versus 7,200 max. That's not too bad. Still a four hour cooldown. So basically you can kill a troop. Here's a normal one that I've already unlocked. 3,750 to 6,000. Not too bad. So I think the most important thing with these guys is that even though they might be pretty strong, I think the cooldown is ultimately what balances these and you can use them strategically. So I think that's a okay. Uh, of course, equipping them is nothing special. You just equip them to slots. You configure them how you want. And then once you kind of set everything up, then you can basically toggle between kind of your play mode versus your farm mode to access events and everything. That's the same way it was when we play tested them. And uh, that's a okay. And it looks like you do have to pay gold to unlock additional slots. That's also okay. It's not super expensive, thousand gold, not too bad. So they're not sucking the daylights out of your wallet in regards to tactical skills. Now let's go in and look at the new tactics conversion store. So as you unlock tactic skills and you unlock them in excess, those are going to convert to, as I understand it, these little coins which then you're going to be able to use to get additional resources. Pretty cool. So just another way for players to get stuff in the game. And the store is not so packed full of items that whales are going to be able to dominate this store and grow even more. It's pretty reasonable, pretty limited. So you can get 3,000 wrenches, 20 coupons, and it resets every 18 days. That's kind of a weird schedule for that. And then of course, you can also get tactic packs for the highest cost. That's okay. And then you have pieces where you can collect pieces of tactics and put those together. I don't know where we can see that at tactics. Where do we see our tactics pieces at? I know I had a couple. Maybe, oh, I guess I don't have tactics pieces. I thought I had some actually, but maybe, maybe not. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, I have to say though, they added another base building and it's a three by three, actually a four by four building. They keep adding base buildings. The only thing I would say to Lilith is we are running out of room in our base. Like it's, I mean, I have room for decorations, but 
Um, I think one thing they could do is just reduce the size of the airstrip. Would be really nice. All right. So anyways, so one of the things I wanted to look at is they did add a new gift to the game. And it was called the Tactical Training Program. So this is $9.99 in American dollars. And I have to say, guys, that typically when you spend 100 American dollars in the game, you get 30,000 gold and 30,000 VIP points. I have to point out with this $9.99 pack here, you get 1,000 gold daily for 31 days plus 3,000 gold. So you're getting 34,000 total gold. Uh, I can't talk gold for ten dollars pretty good so i did buy some diamonds we're going to test this out to experience this new glorified super weapons world that we're being introduced to so let's buy it and we basically get a simulation coupon fancy right okay claim so it's going to be a login and claim it type thing there's my thousand gold and my simulation coupon for the day and it's kind of like a uh, covert masons or arms deal. You can keep extended it apparently. All right, let's go back and let's go to let's simulate stuff. Let's try it out. So this is going to remind me of legendary showroom in a way, basically. So already unlocked a buff increases firepower. Ooh, that's a cool one. But is that showing 22.5% for five minutes? That's actually really good. That's actually really good. Quick equip, cool. So you can throw it on your bar right away. Quick equip it. 22.5% is just for the basic star level. So let's go to the manual. What's the max? 36%. That's really high. That's basically like having a whole other officer passive on your troop. Two hour cooldown. So again, not overpowered. So like for five minutes, I can buff my troop with an extra percentile. So like if I'm going into, uh, you know, like a, a pool of just army groups on the field with my artillery, I'm going to activate creeping barrage on my howitzer and go to town. Or if I'm taking on a bigger base or something, maybe I do it on my unit for five minutes to, you know, maybe have some alliance members do that same thing. So maybe taking down a whale isn't so painful. So that's pretty cool. And then it cools down for two hours, so you can't abuse it. I really, really, really like that, guys. I think Lilith finally introduced super weapons into the game in a way that actually freaking makes sense. And we got a kudos on them. I'm pretty happy about that. I think it does add some extra dynamic and variety to the game, so can't really complain. And it's not so crazy pay to win, actually. So like right away, I've simulated just a, like one or two of these, because when I logged in earlier, I did one. And uh, going to get some skills. So like this, I got some pieces. Nothing there. Let's do another one. Oh. Nice. Now, I wonder if this is going to be like when they first released the exclusive Bistro and the drop rate seemed really high. And then as time kind of passed, drop rate progressively seemed to get worse and worse. Strikes an enemy ground force troop. Target map within five grid. Uh, deals damage equal to 17.5% of the enemy's current HP. Interesting. All right, so that's it. So that's all my simulation coupons. And so as far as acquiring them, let's see here. How do we get them? So side missions, uh, daily mission chest. Okay, so they've enhanced the daily quests. VIP store, tactical warfare gift. I think the gift, oh, you can just buy them as a gift. There's new gift in the special section. VIP store, so I haven't looked at that. They're probably down here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Ah, nice. Oh, cool. See, see, they are actually being kind to the free-to-play players for once. Guys, it's a lot of oil to spend, but it's free. You just have to farm. We have five of them. All right, nice. Let's use five more.
Nothing? I can already sense the drop rate. Just... All right, there's one. Rain strike. Nice. Firepower uh, by 18.9. That's similar to the other one we got. I'll take it. Uh, we got a legendary piece. Nice. But I don't know. How many pieces do you need to actually assemble one? I'll bet it's 100. There's a... Oh, another one. Looks like the same one. Nice. Some more pieces. Yep, drop rate. Totally tanked already. Can see it. All right, so that was it. So let's go look. Oh, the same place. So let's see. What was the manual? All right, so I have Creeping Barrage, which is the rare version of Range Strike. So I have two of those. So that's actually kind of cool. So I like the fact that I have two because I have the option then of doing, you know, say like 22.5% first with a max of 36 and 18.9 with a max of 27. It's not bad. It's still a pretty good buff to the unit. So for five minutes at a time, without spamming them, I can buff my units for some field fights. So let's go and equip that there. So basically I have a shield. Um, I can kill a unit with a damage coefficient of 3750. And uh, that's the one we don't have equipped yet. I don't really like this one, but it's okay. So I might have to play with how I have my sets set up. So I can do like offense, defense, and something different. I'd pay the thousand gold for the third set just to make it convenient on the field, basically. Um, did they change tactical focus? So it looks like there is tactical focus recovery time. Current tactical focus 150 is the cap. So basically you spend a hundred to activate a skill and you are left with 50 and then you have to recoup 50 before you can use another every six seconds. So that's what 300 seconds every five minutes. You can use a tactical skill. That's really not bad, guys. That's really not bad, I have to say. So the question is, I thought at one point, I was almost sure they were going to add some tech research associated with that because anything having to do with this kind of game mechanic where you have stats that recharge, I guarantee you at some point there will be something that enhances your tactical focus recovery time or your max capacity, you can almost bet on it. We'll add something like that to the game. So not too shabby. So I would be very interested in knowing what you guys think about tactical skills, AKA the new super weapon, replace the super blimps that they totally did a bad job on. And this seems like they actually did an AO job on it so there you have it tactical skills are in the game for real here to stay i don't think they're going to be a problem like original super weapons were i think players are going to probably take well to these and i think they did a great job with the cooldowns and the cost to make sure that they're not going to be spammed and the fact that even as a free-to-play player you could just go in right away and get some of these and you know there's uh actually we got two more apparently because i did some missions now, these are one-time missions once i complete these i don't think we can ever complete these again but it says in the daily mission that there's a way to acquire these but it's at the end 120 and so as long as you log in and do your daily missions every day you're going to get one free simulation coupon Let's use two more. There we go. There you have it, guys. So that is the new tactical skills, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, you are watching DX7 Gaming, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys.